So I'm gonna brew an AeroPress right now of a coffee from Guji, Ethiopia. It's a washed coffee. It's got a classic Ethiopian profile, blueberry, citrus, and jasmine. Fun to make in this AeroPress, which will highlight a lot of those more delicate notes. It's almost like you guys are like a little city coffee shop is all of a sudden dropped in Oyster Bay. That's the idea. <laughs> It's safe to say that Oyster Bay is in the midst of a restaurant boom. Over the past two years, this 17th century hamlet, where Teddy Roosevelt used to summer and Billy Joel calls home, has drawn some of Long Island's best restaurants. We headed to town to find out why, all of a sudden, there's a resurgence. I started off the day meeting Newsday reporter Ted Phillips at the coffee shop where he likes to write his stories. Well, there's, been a, there's been kind of a big change here in terms of the political scene. The, uh, the town has been through uh, indictments and through uh, a lot of legal cases. The guy who everyone had to go to to get a, a, a commercial building permit, he was uh, forced out of his job after pleading guilty to uh, tax evasion. Things started moving. Things that had been sitting, that had been in, the, in this backlog for a long time that you couldn't get the, the town to approve, suddenly they started moving along. It's changed the atmosphere here. And I think the idea is to make yeah, this area look a lot like, uh, like Huntington or another um, downtown that's got it's kind of a rustic historic feel to it. Coffee's a tricky thing because people grasp it right away, but also it's a whole rabbit hole that you can go down your entire life. So you see some people really dive in from day one. Others, maybe after a month, they start taking a little more of an interest in what's different about this place, and so it's a little bit of both. I've been told that Oyster Bay Brewing Company was sort of the catalyst for all of this. When they moved from their old location in the old JL house, that is now Osteria Liana, to essentially Audrey Avenue, which is the main street, it sort of became this place that like young people wanted to be, or young people wanted to hang out. Originally we were brewing at home and when we were looking for a place to start brewing beer, um, we noticed there was a void on the North Shore of Long Island. Uh, if you wanted to visit a brewery or a winery, everybody was always going out east. So we were like, you know what, Oyster Bay is a place to go. We love the history down here. A little bit of a sleepy town when we started, which was great. It just took off from there. Weekends are busy during the week. We used to be open in the old place. Um, you know, five, six days a week. By the time we got here, it was seven days a week. Tasting room was always open. Like most craft breweries, Oyster Bay began as a homebrew operation. Today, beers are available on tap and in cans. We currently have uh, 15 beers on tap. We distribute a portion of those, bars, restaurants. The most popular beer we have right now is uh, a beer we made originally to commemorate the New York Islanders when they were moving out of the Coliseum. Right. Um, that's called Barn Rocker because the Coliseum was the old barn. Since the brewing company relocated two years ago, the Hamlet has seen five new drinking and dining spots. We headed to Nikkei of Peru, where I met with Meredith Mouse to talk about the roots of change. I like to think it was a collective effort, but um, a lot, of, uh, a lot of the shift that we really saw was uh, back in 2013 when the Oyster Bay Brewing Company first opened their doors. I started working for the Oyster Bay Main Street Association back in 2012 and became their executive director in 2013. We as an organization and um, our community partners, all of us work uh, really closely together as a community to, to really affect the kind of change that we want to see in the downtown, which is revitalizations like this. Nikkei is the name for Peruvian citizens who migrated from Japan. The food here is a mashup of the two cultures. Like, you know, you see sushi places and like they try, the ones that try so hard don't always succeed, but these guys seem to have figured out just that right balance.
with my wife's urging, we bought a historic house in town and we were attracted by the beauty. I grew up in Northport. We wanted food that was outstanding. We wanted a new American um, feel for it, approachable for the, uh, both financially and also from a flavor standpoint. To spring opening up, the Taglich family has been long-standing members of the community. To hear that somebody was interested in investing in the downtown beyond just bringing another restaurant, but actually physically improving a building and um, right in the heart of our downtown as well, it was, it was really just exciting and encouraging. Two Spring was one of the most anticipated openings on Long Island. The main reason, Jesse Shanker, an Iron Chef winner who the Taglitches convinced to leave the restaurant life in the city. It was referred to us by a friend, and once we identified him, I got on my hands and knees and begged. You know, it was less about whether he was a Manhattan chef, because we talked to some, some very great chefs from other areas, including the Hamptons. Jesse spoke with me about what made him pack up and move east. I don't know, I feel like I, I made it in Manhattan, I did my thing, and I kinda, it was time to, I, it really wasn't that, you know, I'm a humble guy, I just like to cook and be with my family, and for me it was the right move. I filled my tank once in the last six weeks. It's like I just ping around, my kids go to school, it's all like right here, it's just, it's convenient, and you know, I love this business, you know, and to have everything, my life compact into one little area, it's more peaceful. Oyster Bay, it's a little bit hard to define. Um, I guess the way that I describe it is a traditional downtown, that you can live, work, eat, play here. Osteria Leon sits in the old jailhouse and is the old home to Oyster Bay Brewing Company. It's a casual space with an open kitchen and dishes that are heavy on the vegetables and fresh ingredients, including an excellent twist on a lasagna. What are we making? So uh, we're starting with our clam tagliatelle. Okay. This features uh, local clams right here in Oyster Bay. Very simple, uh, garlic, white wine, parsley, fresh clams. My grandmother taught me how to make pasta, something I've been doing uh, for 20 years now. Um, for me, it just, you know, it's a great vessel to carry flavor through. Cecio Pepe is probably the most popular dish we have. Okay. The clams probably is close second. Okay. But pastas are definitely one of the things people come for over and over again. So we just had the clams on top there. Great. It's a beautiful dish. That's the kind of dish I want every night. All right. So another dish we do here, the roasted carrots. These are roasted in garlic, uh, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Kept very simple. So we have a ricotta honey here. Uh, we make it with a local honey, Bee Haven honey, and a little fried sage. And that's your roasted carrots. So should we uh, go do the most important stuff? Let's eat. Let's eat. So what is that bad boy? Well, this is our beet lasagna. Uh, it's basically all beets. So you have uh, fried beets on top, beet greens, and sliced beets. I would not think of lasagna and beets. This is this is amazing. So look, how do you guys end up in uh, in Oyster Bay? I always think good foods are on the peripheries of town. Right. They're never on Park Avenue or Madison Avenue. Right. You always find them deep in the East Village or something like that. So Oyster Bay made a lot of sense to us. We wanted to bring something fresh and new, and that's really what my cooking is about. Is I want to do push the envelope a little bit. You know, cook to. Finally, we head to Authentico, a more refined Italian restaurant with an all-star chef from Sicily in the kitchen. Oh, look at that. You know I like Chinotto. Ah, Chinotto. Chinotto. <laughs> so we felt that uh, Oyster Bay needed a, an authentic Italian restaurant as opposed to an Italian-American restaurant. The chef is from Sicily, so he does a combination of foods from Emilia-Romagna and Sicily as well, things that he grew up with, things that he's passionate about. Chef Francesco began cooking at a young age and has worked his way through Italy studying regional fare. He makes nearly every dish that comes out of the kitchen. So this is a bolognese. Okay. That's tonight's special action. Okay. Tripala Romana. Along with classics that include meat and cheese boards, over-the-top desserts that have won Francesco accolades, eggplant parmesan and tagliatelle meat sauce, he tries to push the limits with dishes like trippa alla romana, a melt-in-your-mouth tripe that has been slow-cooked in tomato sauce. Is, tr is, is tripe popular in Italy? La tripa? Yes. How about here? Uh, I think... Uh, 
He's trying to get people to try different things. Yeah. You know, I think you know you're seeing a lot of restaurants pop up, whether it's coffee shops or just just more. I like to say Manhattan esque, and that doesn't mean this is not not in a condescending way to Long Island, but just a little more modern. You know, things are just kind of you know moving forward a little bit. We thought it reflected well on a lot of the work that we've done as an association and as a community to really invest in our downtown and uh, try to uh, make it more beautiful and make it a place that people really want to come and spend time. One controversial upgrade is a bridge or tunnel connecting Oyster Bay to Westchester or Connecticut, a crossing that has been discussed since the 1930s and was recently revived by Governor Cuomo. It's hard to make a judgment about the reality of it. We take it very seriously. We as an organization and um, our community partners are against any sort of bridge or tunnel through Oyster Bay. It would upset us environmentally. Right. It would affect us historically. It would just change the landscape and what makes this a, down a historic downtown. Regardless of what happens, Oyster Bay is no longer a sleepy hamlet, joining neighboring North Shore towns such as Syosset, Port Washington, and Huntington as a dining destination.